haven't he? Why, well, all at once struck down. My heart and... Oh! <coughs> I'm hurt something fierce. You take it easy, I'll get you to a doctor. Oh, I ain't gonna last long enough for no doctor to give me my money's worth. Just get me back to my camp. All right. Why don't you show me where your camp is? Give me your handkerchief. Come on, you ain't helpless. Well, I, what are you what are you gonna do with him? Take care of him. It's gonna be a lot of trouble to you. Poor Lauren thing. Well, Trudy, something like this happens every lamb in time. Trudy, I tell you what. Come fall, you fatten him up real good. I'll build a big fire, and we'll roast him. Oh! Hey. Don't you, Dusty, make it such a thing. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh. Now, Trudy, I was just funny. Was just funny? I'll get you good if you ain't. Grandpa. Grandpa. What did you do to him? I found him this way on the trail. Oh. Uh, he helped me, Trudy. Give me a hand, we'll let him off the horse. Let's lie him down. Here we go, Pop. Take it easy. Does the name Harker mean anything to you, girl? No, Grandpa, it don't. There's a rich family in San Francisco named Harker. Yeah, they're the ones I'm talking about. They're your folks, Trudy, just as much as I am. How could that be? I, I ain't never even heard of him. Your father was Frank Harter, a fine, upstanding man. Grandpa, why didn't you tell me all this before? It wasn't easy to tell. You see, your mother met young Frank Harker in San Francisco. They fell in love. But the Harkers was high and mighty. They wasn't gonna have no Hill girl by the name of Abigail Coombs and their family. No, sir. So, Frank and Abigail, they run away and got married. What happened to them? One day, Abigail came here with you. She told me that Frank had up and died. And she come to me because she had no place else to turn. She made me make a promise before she died. What kind of promise? She made me promise that I'd tried to get you back to the Harkers and the things that were rightfully yours. I've been happy here, Grandpa. Seth, I'll take care of her. You know that. You don't have to worry about it. Now, you stay out of this year. I didn't raise her to marry no sheep herder. I want you to go to your rightful people, Trudy. Make them take you back. I don't want to leave here, Grandpa. I'm asking you for your promise, Trudy. Now, will you do as I ask? I'll try, Grandpa. And I'll need yours, too, son. You have my word. Now I can rest easy. He's gone.
Trudy, I put the ground sheet on for you, just in case it comes up a rain or something. Well, don't seem likely. Well, you can't never tell about those things. I put some bread and meat in there for, for you, too, if you get hungry. Thank you, Paul. You look after that lamb now. Oh, I will. Don't you worry about that. Just don't you get to liking it down there too much. Well, you know I could never like anything but what's right here. Paul, I'm afeard. Trudy. I'm all trembly inside. I've never done nothing like this before. Well, I don't like it neither. I don't like your Grandpa sending you off to people you don't know and strangers taking care of you. I ought to be the ones taking care of you, Trudy. Thank you very kindly, Paul, but you ain't no kin of mine. You, you don't need to. Well, I want to. You know I got a strong feeling for you. Why, well, I didn't know nothing of the sort. You never spoke of it. Well, there, there are things that uh, just don't speak right out. How's a girl to know lest you tell her? Well, you know now. You, 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 I got all kinds of things planned for us I want to tell you about. Paul. Paul, I want to hear about them things. I want to hear about all of them. There just ain't no time now. I got to go and do what Grandpa made me promise. Yeah, I guess you do. Well, you go on, then. Don't worry about things. I'll watch over everything around here for you. Thank you, Paul. And don't you fuss none, because I'll be back. I'm hoping you will, Trudy. You know I will. Sure. Sure, I know you will. Better get started. Oh, uh, well, uh, the sooner I, I get going, the sooner I'll be back. You take care of her now, you hear Cartwright? Don't you worry, I'll take good care of her. Because I don't want anything to happen to her. I'll be back before you know it. Yes, it is. <laughs> Come on, I'll take you upstairs to your room. Yeah, this is your room right here. <gasps> Woo, look at it. Is this whole place just for me? Yeah, whole place just for you. Oh, wait. Just walk around and get acquainted. Oh. I'm going to go downstairs and, uh, and heat up a couple of buckets of water. You could kind of wa wash up a little bit before my family gets here. Kind of pretty up. Is it going to be all right with them? I mean, me staying here? Oh, yeah, yeah. My, my pa loves company. You leave that to me. Uh... You need anything, just call me. I'll be downstairs. Yeah. Oh, little Joe. You've been real good to me. Let's make yourself at home. Whose horse is that outside? A horse? Oh! That um, just belongs to a friend of mine, came back with me. No. Girl. Oh? Where is she? Well, she, 
She, she's upstairs. Oh? Yeah, she's gonna, gonna take a bath. Oh. Well, see, you don't, you don't understand, Pa. No, you're right. I don't understand. I suppose you start explaining. Explain. No, her, her name's Trudy. Yes? And, uh, she's a fine, sweet girl. Good. She's gonna take a bath and stay with us for a while. She's gonna stay with us? Oh, yeah, but j j just overnight. I mean, she, she wouldn't be any trouble at all. I, I, I don't think she'd be any trouble at all. Good. Do you, do you think? I should meet him. No trouble at all. What, what, what happened? It's that tippy chair, little Shh. Joe. I feel clean over. Are you all right? Well, I reckon, but you want to warn a buddy about them things. They ain't safe. What, what, what happened in the chair? It's broke. No, it's broke. Don't, don't say anything. Hmm. Trudy, I'd like you to meet my father. Pa, this is... Howdy, Mr. Cartwright. Well, Miss Combs, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, my name's Harker now, I guess, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, at least I think so. Oh, well, from what little Joe told me, I... Well, it's, it's just that so much has been happening to me today, I'm not sure about anything. Except that you folks are being right nice to, to go to all this trouble for me. Oh, that's no trouble, is it, Pa? Oh, no, no, of course, no trouble at all. Uh, Trudy, we're going to be fixing supper pretty soon, and... We're going to wash up, and I thought maybe you'd like to wash up. Yeah, well, I, oh, I was just yeah. bringing her the water when you came in, Paul. Oh, oh, never mind, little Joe. I can tell you. Oh, and don't you worry none about that, that tippy old chair, little Joe. It ain't broke much. I'll fix it myself first thing in the morning. It ain't broke much. Hmm. Joe... That girl wouldn't be safe in Virginia City by herself. You can't send her to San Francisco. Well, what, why not? Her grandfather wanted me to. No, no, no. You said that he wanted you to look after her. Well, she has family in San Francisco. They can look after her. Joe, suppose by chance she happens to find this family of hers, well, the Harkers? Yeah, Harkers. As, suppose they don't take her in. And then what does she do? You know, a couple of hundred miles away from anybody she knows. Why wouldn't they want to take her in? She, she's part of the family. Joseph, you just told me Mr. Harker turned away her mother 20 years ago. Yeah, that's right. I guess we don't have a guarantee he'll take her in, do we? You really got yourself into something, didn't you? Evening, Father. Evening. I was wondering when you boys would get back. Hoss, what did the doctor say about your arm? Oh, it's all right, boy. He said I'd have full use of it in another week or two. Oh, good. Uh, listen. I'd, I'd like to talk to you about something. Yeah, we, we know all about it, Paul. We met little Joe going into town a while ago. Oh, that's our little brother. Goes out looking for a bear and brings back a girl. Yeah. Yeah. I hear them Harkers are pretty fancy folk there in San Francisco. We think, well, a dress or something before we meet this little gal? 
Well, I don't think that will be necessary. This particular little gal wasn't brought up in San Francisco society. Well, uh, Joe didn't give us any detail. He just said he was wiring the people. Uh, what's the story? Well, there's this old man Coombs up in the mountains. That... Trudy, come on down. I want you to meet my other two sons. Miss Trudy Harker, my son Adam. Howdy, Adam. How you doing? And my son Hoss. Howdy. Howdy, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, you sure raised some fine ones. How'd you get them so big? Uh, I guess it's the double helpings they're always eating. Uh, well, uh, Trudy, how about some uh, dinner? Uh, Joe went to Virginia City to send a telegram to your grandfather, but uh, I think among the four of us, we ought to be able to rustle up something. Oh, no, 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 I'll do oh, it. Oh, no, 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 Trudy. No, just... sir, cooking is a woman's job. I'll go see what's out there. If you got some, I'll fix you up some hogback and turnips. It'll only take a short while. Hogback and turnips. That don't sound bad at all, does it? You know, I think that girl's gonna have a little trouble in San Francisco. Yeah, I think our work is cut out for us. What, what sort of work, Paul? Making a young lady out of a mountain girl. You look like you made up pretty well. Yeah, pretty good. Set that telegram off. Yeah. And I persuaded Mrs. Wilson to open up the store. Did you buy all them packages of clothes for Trudy? Yep. Wasn't an easy job either. Uh, tell me something. How'd you pick out the sizes? I just got Maisie from the saloon to come down, try things on for me. She's about the same size. I'll be dead, Burr. Well, little brother, gotta hand it to you. When it comes to women, you're the real expert in the family. Well, I just hope you're right. Hey, where's Trudy anyway? I saw you ride up. Uh, did you hear from Grandpa Harker yet? Uh, I just sent the telegram last night. It'll take a little time. But I made a deal with a man in the telegraph office to bring it here just as soon as he gets it. Trudy, like some coffee? Oh, yeah, sure. One thing I like in the morning, it's good hot coffee. And we noticed. I, uh, I got you some new clothes for your trip to San Francisco. New clothes? For me? Oh. Gee, thanks, little Joe. These don't look to be too sturdy, little Joe. Don't you reckon they'll wear out awful quick? Uh, Trudy. Um, why don't you take take these upstairs and try them on there? And I'm sure your instincts will tell you what goes with what. Yeah, little Joe, as soon as I get this stuff figured out, I'll come down and, and you can tell me if and I was right. I think maybe you should have brought Maisie along. No, no, no. Little brother's the expert. He don't need any help.
Well, Jeb just brought the telegram from Mr. Harker. No? I don't get it. He doesn't want her to come to San Francisco. He wants to come here. Huh? So he'll be here in two weeks, just sign Harker. I don't know whether it's good or bad. I was so sure he'd want her to come there right away. Hmm. Of course, maybe he just wants to check, make sure this is really his granddaughter. Yeah, maybe. Well, there could be another reason. What's that? You know, the Harkers are fairly wealthy people, from what I've been given to understand. And, uh, well, they live a very social life. And, well, Trudy's from the mountains. Well, what does that got to do with it? She's part of the family. Joe, you don't understand. For the last 19 years, Trudy's been hidden up in the mountains, away from civilization. Uh, well, the Harkers, you know, they, they live a life quite different from ours right here in the Ponderosa. Maybe they, uh, they want to look the girl over. Maybe they don't think that she'll fit into their kind of life. You mean I ain't good enough for them? Well, Trudy, come on down. You look lovely. That's it, ain't it? Just like my ma wasn't good enough. Oh, no, Trudy, we were just talking. Yeah, this... Just what does a buddy have to be to be one of them? Yeah, to Trudy, now, let's look at it calmly now. They, they, they do lead a different kind of life, and they, they think differently and talk differently, and, and they dress differently. Joe, could you teach me to... Talk and act like them before they get here. Truly, it's it's hard to learn a whole new way of life in, in two weeks. But, but if I tried, would you help me? Well, little Joe, you promised my grandpa. Oh, it ain't for him, just it's for me. To show him I'm a lady too. Trudy, Trudy, you, you are a lady. You have courage and you have honesty and, well, those are the things that a person should be judged on, not just clothes and manners. Yeah, them and... things, though, them, them clothes and, and manners, they're important to the Harkers, ain't they? Yeah, well, they, they, they might be important. Then I want to get them. Oh, it ain't just for my sake. It's for my ma's sake, too. Will you help me, little Joe? Yeah. Yeah, I'll help you, Trudy. Thank you. Trudy, why don't you rest for a while? You've been, you've been going at it pretty hard now for a couple of days. I don't have time, little Joe. I, I gotta learn it all, everything. Nobody's gonna say that I ain't. Nobody is going to say that I'm not fit. Just don't you give up on me, please, Joe. <laughs> don't worry, I ain't. <laughs> okay, come on, let's try it again. Trudy, put your arms down. You're making fun of me. I am not making fun of you. Well, nobody eats this way. In San Francisco, the society people do eat this way. With all of them forks? All of these forks. With, with all of these forks and, and spoons and glasses? Well, you don't need but one of each of them. And if you have to, you can get along without any of them. Look, I'm not going to argue with you about it. Now, you're going to learn it. We're going to go through it again, all right? Starting from the left. What is this? A fork. Yeah, I know it's a fork. What kind of a fork? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. See? Okay. Ready to try it? 
Well, I might as well get my feet wet. All right, now, when a gentleman comes over and he wants to ask you to dance, he says, may I have the pleasure of this dance? Pleasure? Ain't he taking a lot for granted? Th then you're supposed to say to him, I'd be delighted. Do I gotta say that? Well, you have to say something like that. Why? Well, what if I ain't delighted? Well, just say it anyway as a favor to me. I guess that's so that he won't feel bad if you don't want to dance with him, huh? Yeah, I, I think it's something like that. Come on. Now, put this arm here, see? And you take my hand there. Don't, 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 don't squeeze my hand so tight. Well, I got a good, strong grip. I skinned and quartered an elk once all by myself. Hmm. Well, you j just relax when you're dancing, though. Try to, try to think of your partner as someone more, more charming and more exciting than an elk. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, on one. One. Here we go again. Ready? Let me get. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's good. I couldn't sleep, Mr. Cartwright. I reckon you couldn't either. Either. <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I heard someone moving around down here. And don't you think you ought to be in bed? Well, with Grandpa Harker coming tomorrow, I'm just too excited. Uh, well, you've been working very hard for the last two weeks, and you've done very well. But don't you think that you ought to look lovely and rested in the morning? But there's so much to do and remember. Oh, by the way, I've asked Annie Wilson to come over in the morning to help out with the last-minute details. Thank you. Right, so you haven't a thing to worry about. Tomorrow will be just fine. T tomorrow, I gotta do everything right. You will. I just gotta make him want me. I just gotta. Mr. Harker will want his granddaughter, whether she picks up the right fork or not, if he's any kind of a man. If he doesn't like me, I, I'll just die. No. Oh, you don't understand, Mr. Cartwright, what it's like sleeping on a, on a new soft bed for the first time, wearing pretty clothes and, and eaten off a tablecloth just so must be very wonderful for you i don't ever want to lose all that i can hardly wait to get to san francisco all them tall buildings and, and them shiny bright carriages and fancy parties and wearing pretty clothes all the time well, Trudy, you know there isn't all one big party and all them stylishly dressed young men come to take you dancing Trudy? Don't I remember little Joe saying something about a young man up in the mountains? You mean Paul? Well, uh, well so much has been happening to me. I, I ain't thought about him much lately. Yeah, I guess right now, tomorrow, is the most important thing in your mind. So uh, don't you think you better get some sleep? I'll try. But I won't shut my eyes a wink. In a minute, in a minute. Right now and hot. Here, I'll take those. Hey, hot singers. Hey, hot singers. No hot water in the guest rooms. Here, here, I'll, I'll take those. Five people yelling all the time. Only one half sink. Let me have those. Let me have those. I want to talk to Trudy anyway. This is fun. I can't breathe. You're not supposed to. Now, now hold tight. No, I'm coming. Here, put this dress over your head. These things are burning my hands. I'm coming. I'm coming. Do the best you can. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be there. 
These things are hot. Oh, well, all right. Hook up her dress. Sit down. Sit down there. Don't worry. You remember everything now? I hope so. Okay, wh what do you do with your butter knife? I don't know. Well, just keep watching me. Do whatever I do. What, what foot do you lead off with when you're dancing? The left. I lead off with the left. You lead off with the right. Oh, the right, the right. You're scalping me! If you just hold still. Little Joe, they're coming. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Little Joe, I can't remember nothing. Just relax. You're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. I'm, I'm going to up and die. I just know it. Okay. Quite right. Welcome to the Ponderosa. Thank you, sir. My granddaughter, Stephanie. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, my son, Adam. How do you do? Stephanie, Mr. Harker. And my other son, Eric. We call him Horse. I'm charmed, Horse. Uh, no, ma'am, not, not Horse. Just plain Horse. Uh, boys, would you look after the luggage and perhaps Mr. Harker and Miss Harker will come into the house. It's rather elegant, isn't it, Grandfather? Considering how deep we are in the wilderness. Mr. Cartwright, I've been looking forward to meeting you for some years. Well, thank you, sir. I, I didn't know San Francisco had ever heard of us. We have. Your Ponderosa is quite famous, sir. Well, thank you again. Now, I'm sure you must have had a long, tiring ride. You probably want to rest up a bit. Well, you're very thoughtful, sir. Mr. Cartwright, where's the young lady you promised to show us? Well, I'm sure you... Miss Harker, Mr. Harker, my youngest son, Joseph. I do. How are you, sir? And this, sir, is your granddaughter, Trudy. How do you do? It's a pleasure, my child. My other granddaughter, Stephanie. How do you do? How do you do? I'm looking forward to chatting with you, young lady, after I've rested. Mr. Cartwright? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse us. Interesting. Most interesting. I'll give her more light in this room. That's better. And uh, I'll get some hot water. Will you please sit down a moment, Mr. Cartwright? Of course. If I may come directly to the point, sir. You know the reason I've come out here, don't you? Well, I presume it's uh, to see your granddaughter. <laughs> Precisely. I made a mistake 20 years ago in disowning my son. He was a strong man. He had a good, independent mind. Now, after I die, there will be little enough strength left in the Harker family. Stephanie will run through my money in a year. Well, shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations. Hmm? Yes, I'm afraid that's true. In my old age, I'm looking for an element of strength. My son's strength, if you will, to bring back into the Harker family. I'm hoping there's some of that strength in young Trudy. Well, Mr. Harker, I don't know if uh, Trudy's going to be everything that you might want it to be. But I do know this. She's your granddaughter. about it. I think you said howdy very well. Besides, you're going to get a chance to show up at dinner time. Oh, and that's Stephanie. Have you ever seen anyone so beautiful? I'm going to look like a new clip sheep next to her. Now, look, I think you're prettier than she is, and don't you forget it. All right, little Joe. Mr. Cartwright. Oh, hi. I thought you were going to rest for a little while. Oh, I'm much too excited to rest. It isn't every day that you meet an only cousin for the first time. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. Joseph. Would you be sweet and do us a favor? I would like so much to talk to Cousin Trudy alone for a while. Oh, sure. Shall sure, go check on Hop Sings. He always making out of the biscuits.
are now, Cousin Tootie. We must have a nice, long chat. Tell me about yourself, what you've been doing all these years. Oh, well, I've been living up on the mountains with my grandpa, my other grandpa. Oh, yes, the one who asked the Cartwrights to wire us about you. And what did he tell you about us? That we were very rich? No, he... I mean, yes. He didn't mean anything. Oh, don't apologize, my dear. Believe me, if I'd been you, stuck up there on some mountain and learned that I had some very rich relatives, I would have tried to get to them much sooner than you did. Oh, it's not that way. I mean, about the money. Grandpa said that you were all the kin I had. And you were hoping to be reunited with us, weren't you? Yes. I always thought the kinfolk should be together. <sighs> oh, come now, Cousin Trudy. You wouldn't fit into our life in San Francisco any more than I could live on your mountain. A Grandfather Harker is a very reasonable man. And I'm sure that you can work out a nice financial arrangement with him. Financial arrangement? I don't understand. What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about money. Isn't that what you're really after? Oh, but that's wrong. You're wrong. I, I don't want any money. Hi, Trudy. Paul, wh what are you doing here? Well, I just uh, came down to see how you was doing. I want to tell you that a uh, little lamb died this morning. Lamb? Oh, what lamb? Now you've changed, Trudy. Pretty dressed and everything. Oh, I almost didn't recognize you there for a minute. Cousin Trudy, don't you introduce your acquaintances? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Paul Magruder, the, this is my cousin Stephanie. How do, ma'am? How do you do? Are you a friend of Trudy's from up in the mountains? Well, yes, ma'am. Uh, we spoke for each other. Does that mean that you're Trudy's fiance? Well, I guess that's what it means. Uh, we're going to get married. Paul, I never said I would. You didn't? Well, he said she's gonna come back. My, but this is fascinating news. May I offer my congratulations? Well, thank you, Cousin Stephanie, but nothing's settled yet. Well, I would say it's all settled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm sure an engaged couple must have lots to talk about. Oh, Paul. Why did you have to come down here? And why just now? Well, I missed you. I, I wanted to see what she's doing, that's all. Well, I'm doing all right. Didn't you think I'd be able to manage things? And why... Why did you have to tell her we were spoken for? There ain't nothing wrong with a body telling the truth. Well, it ain't the truth. Isn't the truth. At least why it's not right now. I gotta find out about Grandpa Harker first. If he wants me, if, if I'm good enough. Good enough? What do you mean, good enough? Oh, Paul, you, you don't understand. Tonight, tonight is so important. Paul, please, you, you go on back to that mountain, and as soon as I know, I'll send for you. You ain't coming back, are you, Trudy? Paul, you, you just don't understand, please. Hey, Paul, when'd you get here? Hello, Joe. I just came down to see Trudy, that's all. Come on inside. No, she don't want to see me. What are you talking about? Trudy tell you that? Just the same as she said she's gonna send for me when her folks got her settled. Doc Paul, I don't think she meant that. What's going on around here, little Joe? Something's changed her. I think maybe she's a little upset. It's been a big day for her meeting her relatives. Mm hmm Well, maybe I'd just like to meet them folks myself. You think he fixed that up for me? See any reason why not? Why don't we go to the bunkhouse and clean up? We'll have dinner in a little while. Thank you, Hobson. Quite right, this fowl is delicious. Mm, simply marvelous. Which wine was used in the sauce? I believe Hopsing uses a sauterne, and grapes of which are uh, grown not too far from your part of the country, Mr. Harker. Well, whatever it is, it's uh, right tasty. Paul, use your fork. Cousin Trudy, why don't you let your friend eat in his own fashion? 
Uh, Mr. Harker, I thought perhaps tomorrow we might ride around the Ponderosa, and then you can take a look at our livestock operation. That would be most interesting to me, Mr. Cartwright. I've told my business associates time and time again that the resources of this country... Oh, piffle, Grandfather. Do we have to go into that sort of thing now? My dear, you'll find that if you give a man half a chance, all he wants to talk about is business. I suppose. How about you, Mr. Magruder? I was hoping you might show us where you live. Well, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty poor piece, ma'am. It's up in the high country on the North Fork of the Bushy Creek. Bushy Creek. Oh, what a quaint name. Is that where you have your house? Yes, ma'am. Well, it's not a house, exactly. It's a cabin. Build it yourself, no doubt. Sure did. Including the dirt floor. Stephanie, that'll be enough. But, Grandfather, I was just asking about the house because I want to know if that's where he intends to take his wife. Stephanie, I fail to see where any of this is our concern. Grandfather, you mean Cousin Trudy hasn't told you that Mr. Magruder is her fiance? They're engaged to be married. Trudy, is this true? Well, you see, Grandpa, I... Go ahead and tell him, Trudy. Paul and me, we, we've known each other a long time. Well, are you going to marry him? I guess she's not. Excuse me for pushing in here, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Paul, sit down. You're welcome here any time, you know that. Well, thank you very much, sir, but if it's all the same to you, I'd like to stay in a bunkhouse tonight. I gotta get back up to the mountain first thing in the morning. I got a lot of things to do. There's a meadow up there that ain't never been turned to plow. And there's a creek up there that I gotta dam up. There's things up there in a the high country a man needs for his family and his children. It's important to me. I used to think it was important to you, too, Trudy. I guess you found something else. Whatever it is, I wish you well. I'm very sorry. I, I seem to have started something. Yes. I think it's probably just as well. I think you're wrong, Grandpa. Dead wrong. Maybe Paul didn't know which one of them doodads to, to scoop up his vittles with. And maybe I don't either. But I've had enough upbringing to know that you don't make fun of somebody sitting at the same table with you. Trudy, I just want you to know that I'd be proud to have you come and live with me in San Francisco. Up to now, I felt that the Harker family had almost lost its last vestige of courage and honesty. Grandpa, thank you. But I know where I belong now. It's with Paul and the things he believes in. And I guess it's high time I stopped trying to be something I'm not. I grew up on that mountain. And I reckon I belong there. Trudy? I'll be leaving come morning. Well, Miss Stephanie, it was nice having you here at the Ponderosa. Cartwright, I'd like to say... As I told you before, Stephanie, you've said enough already. I just wanted to thank you for your hospitality. You're very welcome. Well, goodbye, sir. Hoss will meet you in Virginia City with your tickets for San Francisco. And I'm... I'm sorry that your trip wasn't all that you thought it would be. On the contrary. I found the granddaughter I was looking for. The fact that she won't be living with me won't change that. No. Perhaps someday she'll come to see me. Will you please tell her that for me? I think you can tell her that for yourself. 
I just wanted to say goodbye, Grandpa Harkin. Well, I'm sorry if I've disappointed you. You didn't disappoint me, child. I'm proud of you. And when you feel like it, I hope both you and your husband will come to visit me. Goodbye, Cousin Stephanie. Goodbye, Trudy. And I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, Trudy, what now? Well, little Joe's helped Paul tie my things on the horse, and I guess we'll be going. Trudy, something I'd like to say to you. You're a real lady. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. At least I learned what a real lady is. 